Wow, so Scream 6 really does come back with a vengeance. I was not expecting it to be this brilliant, but it just goes back to the recipe of what makes the Scream franchise so incredible with all of the tropes, the legacy characters, the new characters, the voice of Ghostface, the unstoppable Ghostface kills, just everything in this movie is just magnified. So they have the core foundations of what makes this brand so good and then they just added a brilliant layer on top. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Lifestyle Critic. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video, we are going to be reviewing and breaking down Scream 6, which was absolutely brilliant. I genuinely was not expecting it to be this good, but it is just so brilliant, especially with the fact that Nev Campbell's iconic Sydney Prescott wasn't in this movie. But regardless, they totally delivered and smashed out the park with this movie as the storyline is really, really great. The characters, you really feel for them. There's so many brilliant twists and turns. And the the final act of this movie is just so epic, beyond anything that you can imagine. And it's just such a refreshing new entry, especially after Scream 5 was a little bit hit or miss. So I'm so impressed with Scream 6 and I just can't wait to break it down with you in this movie review. So I am a massive Scream fan and I had very high expectations for this film and I'm really pleased to say that from a storyline perspective they absolutely delivered with this film. So it's basically set in New York City and all of the survivors from Scream 5 from a Woodsboro perspective have now found themselves in New York City and of course Ghostface is not far behind and the entire city really is Ghostfaces for the taking which is actually pretty terrifying when you watch this movie as there are so many places that Ghostface can just suddenly appear and just cause absolute anarchy and have some truly gruesome moments and truly gruesome kills. So the film then quickly becomes what we all know and love in terms of it being a murder mystery survival horror film with Sam and Tara now both being co-leads in this film which immediately sets it apart from the other entries within this franchise and they have to quickly work out who is after them. And I think they use the legacy characters in a much more impressive way than they did in Scream 5. And they were really clever how they interwove a shrine into this film in terms of all of the past Ghostface kills, in terms of all of the costumes, all of the murder weapons, everything is contained within this shrine. And by the end of this movie, you really do understand how Ghostface was able to acquire all of this stuff. Now, from a positive point of view, this feels like a true quintessential Scream movie. As like I said right in the beginning, it's got all of the ingredients that really do make a Scream movie a Scream movie. For example, all of the tropes, all of the inventive kills, the fact that Ghostface is just running wild. And all of the Scream movies actually have got a real police cop aspect to them. And it's really great to kind of see that appearing once again, as it really does throw back to the original trilogy and Scream 4 as well, actually really, really nicely. And there are some really nice references to both Dewey and to Sydney as well, which is such a great touch. And it totally subverts your expectations. I mean, murder mystery movies are always really, really good from this perspective in terms of A, taking you down the wrong path and giving you a lot of red herrings. But I feel like this movie just amps it up really, really well as it really does make you expect to see one thing and then suddenly subverts your expectations in such a good way. And I really love how every single Scream entry is really individual in terms of its placement. So for example, Scream 1 was making fun of horror movies. Scream 2 was of course making fun of sequels. The third one was making fun of trilogies. The fourth one was making fun of reboots. The fifth one was making fun of requels. And this time, we're making fun of franchises. So it is able to be really individual within all of the six Scream films. And speaking of the past Scream movies, there are some really brilliant references to the past in particular, with Scream 2 is of course they're relaunching the franchise and this is the second entry within that relaunch. So for example, referring to Omega Vega Zeta, which was of course where Buffy the Vampire Sarah Michelle Gellar's character was killed, Gail finally getting a call from Ghostface. And I just have to say that sequence was just so good. Courtney Cox absolutely delivered within that Gale Weather sequence. I absolutely thought it was brilliant. And of course, Randy's iconic death in the middle of the open space within the college campus, suddenly being pulled into a van. And they do kind of retrace all of those steps in a really impressive new modern way. And the second film is also focusing on a film club and a lot of things taking place on stage. And I feel like they do that in a really interesting new way. First of all, for example, having a true film school instead of a club and having a lot of stuff on stage. I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, but I love the way that they do that. And I feel like they follow a lot of beats from the original trilogy in a much more impressive way in this movie than they did in the fifth one. And of course there is the shrine 
were just references back to all of the past Scream movies so brilliantly. And the fifth Scream movie got a little bit of criticism in terms of the finale of it was just so conventional. And even though they do follow a lot of steps from the past, I just loved the epic finale aspects of the final act of this movie. It was just so good. And Ghostface is just so brutal in this movie that you just can't believe what you're seeing. However, from a negative point of view, I do think that they could have made the opening sequence of this movie a little bit more epic and a little bit more elaborate. I mean, they do make up for this by the end of this movie, but they definitely could have improved the start of this film. And I definitely do think that they could have and should have used the legacy characters in a much more impressive way. I mean, Gail is really, really good to her credit, but Kirby should have been so much better done. I mean, she was a true fan favorite in Scream 4 and she is here but she feels a little bit like a shell of her former self and I do think they could have added a few more chase sequences I mean the ones that are in this film are absolutely brilliant for example the one in the apartment and the one where they are running around New York City and of course the ending all of those are brilliant and of course Gail Weathers one as well and I know they can't do that for every single one and you know you do have to have a few short and sweet ones in there too but I do think they could have benefited from having a few more chase sequences but you know that is me being really really nitpicky as over from a storyline perspective, this movie is actually pretty awesome. So from a casting character's point of view, for the most part, they are all so good in this film. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, of course, we have Melissa Barrera, who is really, really good playing Sam Carpenter. I think she is a really good final girl and lead character and a dramatic improvement from Scream 5, where she was a little bit personality-less in that film, whereas this time she definitely brings it. And I think it was an absolute stroke of genius to make her Billy Loomis's daughter. And they even referenced that a lot in this movie, actually. And there are even more connections to the past. So I feel like she is a really great character to pass the torch from Sidney Prescott to Sam Carpenter. As like I said, she is able to continue the franchise really, really well and hold it together in a much better way than she did in Scream 5. Next up, we have to talk about Jenna Ortega, who equally is so, so good as a bit of a second co-lead and is in this movie so much more than she was in Scream 5. I did actually think Tara was really good in Scream 5, but she is even better in this film. And she is a true character in her own right. And I feel like in some ways she's actually really relatable as Sam is just so desperate to always protect her whereas Tara just wants to live her own life, but of course there's a ghost face killer around, so Sam really wants to protect her. But Jenna Ortega's star power really does shine, as like I said, she is brilliant in her own right. Mindy and Chad are also back from Scream 5 too, being the niece and nephew of Randy, so I think all of the connections to the original trilogy are just so good. And in particular, I love Mindy's monologue that she is giving, explaining how, you know, this movie is going to be focusing a lot more on all of the franchise aspects. And I feel like they complete the core four really nicely, but I do think that their character development could be even stronger. I love the fact that they brought back Roger L. Jackson as his voice as the iconic Ghostface is just absolute class. Absolutely love the fact that Courtney Cox is back as Gail Weathers, as of course we don't have Dewey anymore and Sydney is nowhere to be seen in this movie. So this really does allow Gail Weathers to really shine and she is back to her classic self especially in Scream 2 where she really is a true boss lady and she really does have all of those aspects in her in this film which is really really good but she is also able to add and work alongside this ensemble group so Gail is really really brilliant especially as she is the one that discovers the shrine in the first place and like I kept saying her sequence with Ghostface was just absolutely brilliant I love their exchange I love all of the references that they are making to the past and it really does make you think that they should have done even more with Gail Weathers in those original first four films I wish I could say the same thing about Kirby as Hayden Panettiere is really good in this film but I was just expecting a lot more from her especially as she is a true fan favorite and there was so much hysteria when people found out that she is even going to be in this film which I do think is a big deal and she is good but I do think she could have been even better. Detective Bailey is a really really brilliant character and he really does bring the police force to life in this film and of course there are a whole host of new characters as well but in particular I love Samara Weaving and I also really love Josh Segarra's character as well as they are really bringing so much to the ensemble so like I said from a casting character's point of view for the most part they are all actually really really awesome. <laughs> 
So from a visual perspective, Scream 6 absolutely delivers. It looks really, really modern, really, really impressive. And the fact that we are in New York City is actually pretty terrifying as Ghostface is just going to pop up in the most unexpected of places. For example, in alleyways, in your bedroom, on the train, in shops. It is just so unbelievable. The places that Ghostface can just suddenly pop up and just cause absolute anarchy. And the kills are just so brutal. In this movie, even though I would have wanted a few more in this film, I have to say all of the chase sequences with various different characters is so adrenaline fueled, especially the ones in which Ghostface is just so desperate to enter some of the bedrooms. And of course, the one in which he is in Gail Weathers' apartment is just so unbelievable. The shrine, the fact that you can see all of these references to the past is really, really cool, but also really, really creepy as well. But the ending of this movie definitely is where the visuals are at their strongest as it is just so intense and just so unbelievable the things that just take place. And the way in which it just throws back to Scream 2 is just done in such a good way. And so from a visual perspective, this movie is just absolutely awesome. <laughs> So from a comparison perspective, I actually really enjoyed Scream 6 so much more than I thought I would have done, especially as Scream 5 was a bit of an average entry and I absolutely love the first four Scream movies. So it was a true pleasant surprise to see that this entry is actually really, really brilliant. And now I think it's in my top three of all Scream movies ever released as it's literally that good. And I love how they mirror and model a lot of things on Scream 2 whilst also doing their own new things as well. And in terms of comparing it to other slasher movies, I think it's such a solid entry in its own right and is just so much stronger than the I Know What You Did Last Summer franchise too. So overall, I'm sure it will come as no surprise that I absolutely loved Scream 6. I feel like it returns to form really, really well whilst also innovating a lot of things. And I didn't think that they would be able to pull off New York City in as good of a way as Woodsboro is in terms of a classic destination. But they did, and they just did it so, so well. And it just totally subverts your expectations. So many brilliant twists and turns. The storyline narrative is really fast paced whilst also being really, really enjoyable. And it really does have you on the edge of your seat throughout this movie. And it really doesn't stop. And the ending is just so satisfying. And it really does reward everything that you have invested in watching this movie, as well as the entire franchise. And so for all of those reasons, I have to give Scream 6 a massive 8 out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of Scream 6, so please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.